Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your motion capture for Source Filmmaker tutorial. This is part three, processing the recorded action. In parts one and two, I showed you how to calibrate, configure, and set up your IPSoft recording software and to calibrate your two connects. In part three, I'm going to show you how we can manipulate or process the action we recorded in part two. So first you're going to start up Motion Capture Studio. You'll select File and New Project. Then you're going to pick the video you recorded. It's going to be an action project. And then you're going to browse to the XML file that represents the calibration we took in part one. Then you're going to say whether you're a male or a female and choose your height. I'm kind of tall, so I chose 1.84 meters. Uh, then it's going to uh, show you the video of the motion capture sequence. I like to turn the video portion off. Uh, because it just makes it a little bit easier to do this part. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use the various tools that Motion Capture Studio provides us to line up that model there with the recorded depth of field. And you can see me sitting there with my hands out to the sides. And in a moment, the camera will move in a little bit more closely and you'll be able to see more of the depth field information. Uh, you can use, <clears throat> excuse me, you can use the select and the move tools and even uh, a basic inverse kinematics rig to manipulate the model. The basic thing we need to do though is just line that sucker up. So I'm going to hit the move tool and I'm going to move it over there and then I'm going to rotate it. And um, you use the right mouse button to pan and the left mouse button, shift in the left mouse button to move around, I believe. Uh, you'll just need to experiment with the, uh, with the controls to navigate around in the user interface so you can get the right perspective. What we need to do, though, is we got to line up this model. This, uh, this is the motion capture model, the rig that's actually going to capture the activity. And the software needs to know where you are in the in the depth information there so that it can properly map the information map the movements so we're going to kind of twiddle it around here until it roughly lines up this doesn't have to be perfect we're not doing rocket science here and the software does have a lot of features that can help you out but it's important that things like the the foot the feet uh, are going to be at the same level and on the plane and so forth and then the next thing that we've got to do is, I, I, it turns out I'm actually a little taller than I thought, so I increased the, the height a little bit. And so once we've gotten it fairly well lined up, you know, we're not going to, again, it's not rocket science, but you do want it to be as close as possible. And look at it from multiple angles so you don't find out that it's off by a huge amount in some way or another. And it can sometimes take a moment to move around moving it in and out just so you can kind of make sure that you're in the right depth field. Make sure you've got depth information from both sensors turned on too. All right, this is looking pretty close. So I'm going to go over to the tracking tab and I'm going to turn on mo uh, shoulder tracking and then I'm going to say refit pose. Now notice what it did is that since it was close enough, it was able to say, oh, okay, well, now we're going to lock the, the model's arms to the ones that it finds when I hit refit pose. Now I've got to make the model fit my body shape and given that uh, I am a disgusting fat body private pile five points if you get the reference uh, I am going to make sure that I adjust my body mass index uh, my belly and my hips and my waist up this is not a time to flatter yourself if you're um, if you need to change it to adjust for your body shape then do it uh, because the closer you can get the model the skin uh, to fit your depth information and you can adjust these sliders to uh, to make sure that it looks right or to make sure that you can see which is which. Uh, adjust the body mass, adjust the, uh, um, the hips, waist, belly. If you're a woman, adjust the bust uh, and so forth to make sure that the skin is as close as you can get it to the model on the screen. Once you've got that though, and you hit refit pose again, you basically, it's a, it's a process of refinement. You, you align it, you refit the pose, you make some minor adjustments with the uh, sizes and height and so forth, and you hit refit pose again. At some point, once you're satisfied, you're going to need to pick the animation sequence, or excuse me, the, uh, the range of interest that you want to, uh, to track. And so once I've determined that this model is lined up and I fit the pose where I want it to, I am going to go and just like in the beginning, I am going to, excuse me, in, in, the, uh, uh, in the calibration tutorial, I'm going to find the in point and the out point of the motion that I want to track. And you can set the in point by going to I, or excuse me, by hitting the I button or by uh, dragging from the left on that timeline. 
I'm just going to drag around and notice that the, the don't expect the model to follow you at this point. It's just all I'm looking at is the field depth information to get an idea of where I'm at. And once I've gotten to the end of the sequences that I recorded, remember I did this three or four times in part two, uh, I will then go ahead and stop it and set the out point. And that will be the range of interest for Motion Capture Studio. Uh, and that's what it's going to track information on. So, and uh, if you hit the background button, by the way, it shows you the uh, available space that it's recording in. Okay, this looks like we're about at the end of that. So, and you can see I just walked out of frame. So, I'll pause it, scrub back a little bit to where I'm happy with the end of it. And then we're going to set the out point and we'll be done with it. Now, we'll go back to the beginning and I'm going to start tracking. I don't want to manage any takes yet. We'll look at that in a moment. So we'll go back to the beginning. And uh, then I'm going to go over to the uh, to the to that button there. Start tracking or track forward. Excuse me. You're going to hit track forward. And then you're going to wait and you will see it'll take several seconds per frame. Uh, and this can take up to 20, 30 minutes for some animations or even longer if it's a long sequence. So I'm going to fast forward this and we will come back to it once we are done with the track. All right, now that we've done our first tracking pass, now we need to do post-processing. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to play the animation. I'm going to turn the depth field information off, and I'm just going to play it, maybe pan around a little bit so I can see how the motion capture turned out. And honestly, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, you can see the model moving around. Uh, you can see that it captured most of the animation. It looks like maybe the right arm got a little bit borked on this one. Yep, his right arm got stuck down on his side. So that's a take we're going to get rid of. That's why we do three or four of these. Uh, and also you'll find you'll learn, you'll learn the dimensions of your space as you're working with it. So I did three or four of these. I'm just going to play it and see how it looks. Go through and uh, just verify for myself where, the, uh, where things look good and where they look bad. Now, if... I needed to, I can actually go to each of the individual frames or uh, to ranges of frames and I can correct the tracking error. So like if I did need to correct some place where, for example, it thought that my arm was in a different location or something, I could do that. I'm not going to bother with this one because I did three or four takes, so I can just choose the one that turned out well. If you don't have that luxury, you can go in and you can adjust the individual uh, tracking bits and make sure that it works right. Uh, there's more information and instructions on how to do that on the IppiSoft wiki if you need to do it. So now that I've decided, okay, it looks pretty good, and you know I can see that that looks all right, the, the, the sequence of the, of the arm movements and so forth, it'll actually come through fairly well. Keep in mind, once this goes into Source Filmmaker, there's still going to need to be some tweaks done to it to make it look good because it'll look a little floaty and weird when you first import it. Uh, but the idea is not to make it perfect the first time through. Now, one of the things you're going to notice as you're, uh, as you're playing this back is that the movement is really jittery. You know, it kind of jumps around, and that's an artifact of the way the Kinect depth sensors work. And really, any consumer-level depth field camera or web cameras, they're just not going to be that high resolution. So there's going to be some uh, some variance in the way they work. And that'll show up as jitter. Um, and as the as the model moves around, you can see that it's kind of shaky. Uh, so what we're going to need to do is apply uh, some post processing, which is a, a, an anti jitter tool, uh, or it's really a filter and it goes through and it adjusts all the movements uh, to remove the jitter. And uh, you can find it right there on the tracking tab. And there's an options button. I'm going to, I'm going to actually going to turn up the smoothing a little bit more on the legs. I'm going to turn it up on the torso. I'm going to, I'm going to turn it up maybe just a little bit on the arms. I'm going to turn it up a lot on the legs. And uh, I'm going to turn it up just a touch on the torso and the arms just to, to try and smooth out the animation. And then you, when you're done and you've decided that it looks okay, uh, you can click okay. There's, there's, you know, experiment with this and see what works best for you. Because everything that you do will be different depending on the scene, on the sequence, on what you did, and on how good a resolution you got and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and save the project.
just in case something goes wrong or my computer crashes. Uh, and then I'm going to say apply. And just like when we tracked, now we have to wait. So we're going to wait a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm going to fast forward this and then we will uh, be back to conclude this particular chapter of our tutorial. Okay, now that the jitter filter is, is done, we can now take a look at what the results were. So we can go ahead and go back to the beginning of the animation, or to the beginning of the region of interest, I should say, and uh, we're going to play it back and see how it looks. And as you can see, the, uh, the result is much smoother, uh, much more natural. Now, Differing levels of jitter are going to produce, or anti-jitter, are going to produce different effects. And again, you're going to need to experiment with how much removing jitter causes loss of resolution in some of your uh, animations. So uh, explore it, experiment, go with caution, don't be afraid to try different things. Uh, and in the, in the end, you'll find what works for you. There's also another filter called trajectory smoothing. Now that is a much faster filter and it doesn't require you to apply it and wait. It's applied in real time. And if you turn up smooth versus sharpen, I'd say leave it at one. Experiment by turning smooth up a little bit. Each time you click it, it'll increase it by one. Each time you click sharpen, it'll decrease it by one. Um, and all that really does is, um, it, 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 it increases the trajectory smoothing, but too much of it can start making your, your animations look a little unnatural and weird. Uh, so I prefer to keep it at one, but that is entirely up to you. Again, experiment, see what it looks like. But don't apply trajectory smoothing until after you've applied jitter uh, filtering, because otherwise you can't tell what's doing what. So um, that's really all it requires at this point, is that uh, we've now completed the tracking. and. Uh, Next, I'm going to show you real briefly how to export a particular take. Exporting takes is easy. All you have to do is go down to the line underneath the region of interest and then select another a, a specific take that you want. As you can see, I've picked a very small area and said that is the take that I want. I went back and forth and figured that ah, this is the one that is the best out of all of the ones that I did. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to right click it and I'm going to export it for Motion Builder in a BVH file. Motion Builder BVH. And uh, that's really all there is to it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial, which is how you can use Motion Builder and Maya to move your animations into DMX format.